the sweat box. Oh boy, I'm sweating more than that celebrity, what with their current ongoing allegations. Anyway, today's movie is an unreleased documentary from the late 90s called The Sweatbox, as it chronicles the developmental hell with Men Behind the Sun? Kingdom of the Sun, which went on to become Emperor's New Groove. The making of footage is shot by Trudy Styler, documentarian, as it features her musician husband uh, Sting or something, I don't know what happened. And he submits a few songs, but they ended up getting rejected. This whole song is about... Um Llamas. I went into watching this movie knowing full well that it's not banned and the movie that Disney doesn't want you to see as all the articles written about it suggest but it's still you know something that they have chosen to not release in its full form. Come on movie are we gonna talk about all the extortion and all the disgusting practices? Instead it's more of a blood sweat and tears documentary about what it's like to make something with a committee how you have to sometimes cut out your favorite bits in service of the story. How regime change will completely upend the progress of multiple projects. Maybe some get the axe. And how trying to please everyone at once will ultimately please no one. So yeah, this is good for anyone in the creative field who's constantly questioning their dedication, drive, objectivity. I have no ground. I have no ground. I have no grounds for criticizing the actual movie since it's not a finished movie so there'll be some awkward sound edits or not enough music but ultimately I'm kind of left wondering whose side are they actually on on the one hand it's like oh these animators are throwing their life into this only to get rejected in the end but then at the end of the movie you have Sting going you know even though it took two and a half goddamn years and it pulled me away from everything else that I had already agreed to do Oh, it just makes it all worth it to hear this song at the end. La la la, Disney is great! And I don't think that this movie set out to be bipartisan. I think it just didn't choose a side. Sometimes with a documentary, you are actually looking for a point of view, and it doesn't always have to be completely objective. I hate to say it, but I actually ended up empathizing with the Disney producers and executives more than I thought or wanted to. And I'm not having much fun. I don't believe that they're throwing all this money into a product that they willingly want it to become shitty and homogenized. I mean, their tastes are definitely going to be different from these animators and writers. But if you're going to go into a Disney production as an animator or writer, of course it's going to get sliced to bits. I think there were a lot of creative ideas and songs and characters that came in from the earlier drafts of this movie, but even they admitted themselves, the creators, yeah, we don't really have enough of a story going on right now. So if you want to watch a movie about where ideas go to die, a little place called Disney Production Headquarters, corp, 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 then this is the movie for you, especially if you're a creative person. Even then, though, I would say that you'd probably only want to watch it once and then just kind of move on with your life. This is not like the band movie that Disney doesn't want you to see! And so ultimately, I was a little disappointed. It wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. But again, it's hard to criticize because it's an unfinished film, so it's more just kind of a glimpse inside the making of an animated Disney feature in the late 90s. It kind of feels like the end of an era because everything changed. After post post ants and soon after you sort of get crap like Shrek or whatever. Really makes you wonder if it's worth making these film products at all. Well, so long, kid. Stay sexy.